like to welcome our online audience. Thanks for joining us, folks. Um, it's lovely to have you with us this morning. Um, it's raining here. I'm not sure where, whether it's raining where you are, but I hope it is. hope you're um, receiving this beautiful rain that we're getting here at Calba. Um, we're going to sing Mighty to Save. We might stand up for this one, folks. going to come and play for us now another really beautiful old hymn feel free to sing along uh, while we have our tithes and offerings
Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to come into your place today so we can worship you. We want to thank you here in Cowbar as we experience this, uh, this rain that we've got today. And we pray that it's falling in the places that need it the most. We want to thank you today for all the blessings that you give to each and every one of us. And just as we give this little bit back to you today, we just pray that you'll uh, multiply it and you'll use it for the extension of your kingdom here in this place. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Today's Bible reading is taken from Matthew 5, 1 to 12. So if you've got your Bibles, feel free to open that up and follow along. Otherwise, it will be on the screen. Now, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples came with him. And he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted those prophets who were before you. May God add his understanding to that reading this morning as we look into his word. All right, we're going to do something a little bit different to start the message today. And we are going to play a game. All right. We are going to play a quick game of Simon Says. Now, everyone knows Simon Says? Yeah? All right. Here we go. Simon Says, clap your hands. Hey. You can play along at home as well. Simon Says, nod your head. Simon Says, raise your arms. Do the Mexican wave. Oh, it's Simon didn't say. Caught some of you out. <coughs> All right, round two. Simon says sing, la, 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 la. <laughs> Simon says stomp your feet. Simon says touch your nose. Shout amen. Oh, we did very well. Well done. Now, you're probably wondering why I started with a game of Simon Says. <clears throat> Today, we're going to look at some of the Beatitudes. In particular, humility, meekness, and how to be humble. <coughs> Matthew 18, 1 to 4, says, at, the time that, sorry, <clears throat> at that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child and had him stand among them. And he said, I tell you the truth. Unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. For us this morning, it might have been a little bit fun acting like kids just for a little moment and playing the game of Simon Says. I want you to remember that whoever humbles themselves like a child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And in today's scripture, we started to look at the Beatitudes, which are eight blessings recounted by, recounted by Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount. In all eight Beatitudes, 
we see a declaration of blessedness followed by a reason why. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. What do you think of when you hear the word blessed? For most of us, we feel blessed because we have food to eat. We have a family that loves us. We have a roof over our heads. We have school or jobs to go to or we enjoy our retirement years. We have the ability to make our own choices. And we particularly are blessed to have a church that we can call home. The word blessed is a wonderful word. We as Christians use words like blessed and blessing a lot. Blessed is a Christian word. It's a spiritual word. It's a biblical word. The word blessed that Jesus used in the Sermon on the Mount is from the Greek word makarios which means to be happy or blissful, or it also means a self-contained happiness. Now, one would look at this list of what brings blessedness and probably be a little bit confused. You wouldn't exactly think it would bring happiness or bliss. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn or those who grieve. Blessed are the meek those who are weak, and so on. When we are asked, what does it mean to be blessed? Our answers would not be what we find there in that list. But as we often see in the Bible, our way of thinking contrasts God's way of thinking. In the Beatitudes, we gain a new understanding as to what brings blessedness. We gain an understanding of what our attitudes should be as followers of Christ. Matthew 5, 1 to 3 says, Now when he saw the crowds, he went up on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The term poor in spirit is very deceiving. One might think that being poor in spirit is a bad thing. And that's a very real and natural thing to think. After all, who wants to be poor in anything? But poor in spirit is a good thing. Being poor in spirit means I'm someone who has recognised my own spiritual poverty. I have recognised my sinfulness. Being poor in spirit is a blessing because it represents humility. And we looked at this earlier in Matthew 18, 1 to 4. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And he used the child as the example and challenged us that if we don't be like little children, then we'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. You see, in that moment, Jesus is simply saying we need to be humble. About a month ago, Zara had a paid appointment at the Brisbane Children's Hospital. And in true hospital style, the wait was rather long. There were a few restless kids waiting to be seen. And then there was Zara using YouTube on my phone to sing to the worship song, Goodness of God at the top of her lungs. Your goodness is running after, running after me, in the middle of the waiting room. And in that moment, those words from Matthew 18 came to mind. I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of of heaven. I don't know about you, but I would imagine not too many adults would sing at the top of their lungs while waiting in a hospital waiting room like that. 
But why was it so easy for Zara? Because most kids are carefree. They are bold, they're confident, they're risk takers. Why? Because they don't know any different. There is no pride, just a sense of no regret and innocence. Humility allows us to see our great need for atonement. Being poor in spirit brings us to the place of recognition. Recognition that I've done nothing to deserve heaven, but because of Jesus' sacrifice, I have the privilege of going there. Being poor in spirit allows us the blessing of God's revival. Isaiah 57, 7, uh, 15 says, A message from the high and towering God who lives in eternity, whose name is holy. I live in the high and holy places, but also with the low-spirited, the spirit-crushed. And what I do is put new spirit in them and get them up and on their feet again. And that was from the message translation. To revive means to restore. At home, whenever we get a chance to catch a little bit of time watching some TV, uh, Tiffany loves to watch the medical shows. And it doesn't matter if it's a pregnancy show, an ER show, or an ambulance show, she likes watching them all. And from time to time, particularly in the ER or the ambulance shows, we see heart attack or cardiac arrest related stories. When someone's heart stops, the paramedics try everything they can to revive the person. Sometimes it's successful, but sometimes it's not. But their ultimate goal is to revive that person. And that's what God does for us. When we find ourselves kneeling at the foot of the cross in humble submission, he will revive us. He will renew us. He is breathing the Holy Spirit into us. He is coming to live with us. God takes up residence in the hearts of those who are godly, oh sorry, those who have godly sorrow and repentance. Luke 18, 19 to 14 says, To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everybody else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood up and prayed about himself. God, I thank you that I am like no other man, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all that I get. But the tax collector stood up at a distance and he would not even look up to the heaven but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled and he who humbles himself will be exalted. One of these men was religious, and one of them wasn't. One felt he was entitled to God's favour. The other knew he didn't deserve it. One gave God his resume. The other gave God a cry of mercy. One went home justified, and the other one didn't. The one who wouldn't have been likely, the likely candidate for God's approval, didn't receive it. And the difference is one was humble and one wasn't. Those who think they have done enough to earn God's favour have put themselves in a really risky situation. But those who realise that they can do nothing to earn God's favour except to kneel before him in loneliness of spirit will be lifted up by God. They will be elevated to a status of forgiveness and blessedness. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who kneel before him in repentance, for they will be forgiven. 
And then as we come into verse 4, we read, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. This, res- this relates to one recognising their spiritual poverty. Mourning over the understanding of how spiritually poor they are, and it causes them to call out to God for relief. You know those moments in life that bring you to your knees at the foot of the cross. When we are brought to this point of spiritual despair, God says we will be comforted by the Lord's provision of peace and rest. Matthew 18, 28 to 30 says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus calls to those who realise they are spiritually drained and afflicted. Those who are weighed down with worry and fear. Jesus says, come to me and I will give you rest. I will relieve your spiritual burdens and I will replace your weariness with rejuvenation. I will provide strength for the journey and hope for the future. God will treat you with gentleness, love and patience. God understands your struggles and hardships. And this doesn't just relate to feeling spiritually poor. Blessed are those who mourn also applies to those who literally mourn. When we grieve over a serious loss, God is there to comfort us. 2 Corinthians 1, verse 3 to 4 says, Praise be to God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that when we comfort those in trouble, we then comfort with, sorry, we, sorry, those in any trouble with the comfort with ourselves have received from God. The Father of compassion and the God of of all comfort. What a privilege we have as children of God. He is all about compassion and comfort. People, though well-intentioned, can't come close to the depth of compassion God has. We can empathise and we can sympathise with people, but it won't come close to God's level. I can love you, but God loves you more. I can care for you, but God cares for you more. But ultimately, we want everyone around us to encounter the love, compassion, and comfort of God from God himself. That's why he calls us to share the love, compassion, and comfort with others. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And in verse 5, we see that blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. We can see the essence of humility in the first three Beatitudes. One who is meek is of kind, gentle, spirited, rather than those who are arrogant and pompous. The problem with meekness in our world today is people think meek means weak. The world says, if I'm meek, I'm a pushover. The world says, if I'm meek, I'm an easy target for deception and manipulation. And it's sad how meekness has lost its value in today's society. So when we hear Jesus say, the meek will inherit the earth, we might think that sounds a bit contradictory. But we often fail to realise that being meek doesn't mean you can't be assertive. Meek doesn't mean you don't set boundaries. And meekness doesn't mean you can't stand firm 
on your convictions. Meekness just means you're going to do things with respect and self-control. Although it's true that people sometimes get their way when they're loud and threatening, what they won't get is respect and admiration. However, if you approach someone with meekness and respect, you'll go a heck of a lot further with that person. Jesus was the perfect model of meekness. He was Lord, yet he humbled himself and washed the, the disciples' feet. The guards came to arrest him and take him by force, yet when Peter cut off one of their ears, Jesus turned around and healed him. Peter wasn't being meek in that moment, but Jesus was. I wonder how differently that guard saw Jesus after what he did. We can see the value of meekness when we see the behaviour of Jesus. We can see the value of meekness when we see the attitudes of Jesus. Remember how he described himself in Matthew 11? Gentle and humble. Was Jesus weak? No. He was bold and courageous. He stood up to the religious leaders and told them, that they, well, told them what they needed to hear. He defended the sanctity of the Father's house when he flipped the money changer's table. He didn't do these things in arrogance or out of rage, but he did them in love and in zeal. Jesus was meek, but he was anything but weak. Meekness is strength under control. In fact, the greatest display of strength is restraint. Although some people don't see the value of meekness, God values meekness in his people. Jesus said the meek will inherit the earth. In Psalm 37, 11, it says, The meek will inherit the land. This is referring to the promised land, the land of Canaan. So with Jesus speaking from a spiritual sense, the meek inheriting the earth can mean inheriting the promised land of heaven. When we honour God with choosing to live with the attitudes that please him, he blesses us. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed will be those who have Jesus' attitudes in their life. Blessed are those who live their lives with kindness, gentleness, respect and humility. As followers of Jesus, and as we face the many daily challenges we face in our fallen world, we must allow God's Spirit to continue to produce Christ-like characteristics in each of us. I don't know about you, but I want those characteristics in my life. Kindness, gentleness, respect, meekness and humility. As the worship team come back up this morning, I want to share with you those verses, three, four, and five from the message translation. And it says this. You're blessed when you're at the end of your rope. With less of you, there is more of God and his rule. You're blessed when you feel you've lost what is most dear to you. Only then can you embrace, can you be embraced by the one most dear to you. And you're blessed when you're content with just who you are, no more, no less. That's the moment you'll find yourselves proud owners of everything that can't be bought. With less of us, there is more of God. We are blessed when we honour God with choosing to live with the attitudes that please him. Kindness, gentleness, respect, meekness, 
and humility. How do we do this? With Jesus at the center of it all. With Jesus at the center of our lives. With less of us, there is more of God. Allow God's spirit to continue to produce Christ-like characteristics in your life today. Father God, fill our hearts with love 
and make our hearts pure. You have so richly blessed us with life, with love and joy, with hope in the midst of despair. Help us to have the attitudes of Jesus in our life so that we can show kindness, respect, gentleness and humility to others. May we endeavour to be more and more like you each day. Amen. Just some announcements for the, the near future. Um, next Saturday, space to call home are having retreat day. Um, sorry? Nine till. Nine till four. So if you want to know any more about that, see Kylie. And they're also having their Christmas lunch next Sunday. Also see Kylie about that or to RSVP. Uh, next Sunday, the band will be pl playing at the nursing home, Bassman Retirement Village in Boona. <coughs> uh, a couple uh, Ross people on the roster for this coming week. Cleaning is Kylie and Robert. Mowing for this month, Craig and Brett. Uh, tech, Corey, Lisa, Jonah and Logan. And morning tea, Heather Stibby and Jeanette. Um, the leadership team will be having our monthly meeting this, this coming week. So if you have any issues you'd like us, I would like to bring to our attention, um, there's Neil and Karen and myself here from the leadership team this morning. And there's also Corey and Kathy. Um, just something else to remember. For next month, Sunday the 17th of December, is our community carol service at the Carl Bus School. Thank you, May God bless you and all that you do. We're going to close this morning by singing Shout to the Lord. So um, let's all stand up and have a good sing and then join us for a cup of tea or coffee out the, out the back.
and a benediction this morning. May the strength of God pilot us. May the wisdom of God instruct us. May the head of God protect us. Sorry, the hand of God protect us. And may the word of God direct us. Now and forevermore. Amen.